Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a look at Salient OS Plasma, which was requested by a supporter on Patreon. You can head on over to patreon.com forward slash Tom M. That's T-O-M-M. Or you can have a look at thinklifemedia.com, which is my own personal in-house support page as well. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, chat about Salient OS Plasma. So I looked at this first back in, it must have been June or July, and uh, back then I think it was just based on XFCE. There were a couple little small issues that I had with it, nothing that was major or large. And again, I wasn't sure if those affected a hard, uh, just a hardware install or if that was just a, a virtual box install. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's go ahead and have a look at what this looks like now. So looking at their website, it's just salientos.github.io. Nothing is really here except a download link. So uh, very cool. Just head on and back on over here and you will get to the basic summary, which gives you all of the information. So it is, uh, you know, you have a live USB, you have an installer, uh, you have Arch, you have um, BIOS or UEFI, uh, you know, you have Pomoc and Yay, you have Arch User Report, Calamaris Installer, just a lot of different uh, basic, whatever, uh, uncluttered desktop, all those things. Now, one of the changes that is out since this newer edition is when you head on, head on here over to the, uh, the files directory, you'll see that we no longer have a separate file for NVIDIA like we had in the past. So now you have one file, you download that one file, and that's actually going to have all of the drivers that you need. Now, I didn't see the NVIDIA option as boot up, but on the install, it tells you how to get those working. So we have a generic, we have an AMD, and we have an Intel graphics uh, boot. I'll show you what that screen looks like here in a moment. You can grab the Plasma Edition or the XFCE Edition. I'm doing the Plasma this time as I've already looked at the XFCE Edition. Uh, there is, you can see the um, uh, the change log there, other notes. So I went ahead and downloaded that. And uh, what we're going to do from here is we're going to go ahead and uh, boot this guy up. Okay, so here on the boot screen, we have we just have the generic boot up. We have the AMD, we have the Radeon, we have the i915. Uh, so you can just go ahead and install whichever one you need to do. Now we're not gonna boot this screen here because I already have this installed. I will say that when you boot it up, it's going to automatically load the installer and then right there on the first screen of the installer, it tells you what to do if you have NVIDIA graphics. So this is nice in that now we're down to a single file instead of having multiple files. And within that single file, you can just kind of pick whatever your individual, uh, whatever your individual one happens to be. So here we are landed on the desktop. Now I've done a couple of little things here. Last time I tried out Salient, I had an issue with installing applications. So I went ahead and installed a few applications to see how those would run. And I went to run them and they wouldn't actually run for me. But what the issue is, is that there was a change around December-ish in a few packages on Arch that needed uh, configured a little bit differently. Well, that fix has not yet been put into Salient. So if you are downloading this near the time I'm doing the video, you simply need to push this fix through. And um, what the fix is going to do is it's just going to clear out these. So this is really the command you want to run. sudo pacman rdd lib dmx and lib xx f86 dga and then update everything and then everything will run now if you remember the first time i tried out salient where i had an issue with it the problem that i had is that when it would install and do its automatic partitioning is it would create the file system just big enough to install it didn't even leave any room for any cache or anything else so that is now fixed on this this version now I I was not able to install it without giving it a swap partition. So if you're trying to install it without a swap partition and it's failing, that's the issue. Make sure you're giving it a swap partition. I give it the swap without hibernation. Uh, you can kind of pick what you want to do. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at what memory it is running on. So it's running on about uh, it's running on about uh, one gig. Now, 
since I booted this up, I actually tested Steam. So Steam might be running in the background. And uh, of course, we just booted up LibreOffice as well. When I first started it up without uh, turning this on, it was actually only running about 500 megabytes. So it is actually going to be very light on system resources. Now, the other things that you're going to spot out of the gate here is your right-click menu on the desktop just gets you the application menu. So if you want to change the wallpapers or even maybe change that menu, you're going to have to come up to the, the widget that you'd add to you know, add widgets, things like this, configure the desktop from inside of here. We still have a variety of really excellent wallpapers to choose from. I really enjoyed a lot of his wallpapers. I like this one. Let's go ahead and apply that wallpaper. Now, if you do want to return your old menu back, then you want to come over to your mouse actions, take your right button and change this down to standard menu and apply. Now you'll have your full menu here as well where you can do anything. So the default, just be aware the default's just the application launcher. That's an okay change. It, it's just that there's a few little things in here that are a little bit different. Now I did really like the theming in the old uh, the old XFCE version quite a bit better, but this isn't really all that bad. Out of the box, though, I think most people might look at the system and say it's very bloated. Like, there's a lot of applications installed that you'd really only install under special cases. So out of the box, of course, we have Simple Screen Recorder. That's okay. OBS, though, that's really a, a an application for people who are doing streaming and a bunch of other things like that. So if that's not you, you're going to want to probably remove that. We do have Discord out of the box. It's also curious some of the other things that we have installed out of the box. So we do have Steam, uh, no issues there, except I cannot get Worms to run. So Worms WMD is a native Linux Steam game, and I cannot get it to run on this. I also, though, cannot get it to run on my Arch Labs build on real hardware as well. I can get this to run perfectly fine on Linux Mint Cinnamon. So if anybody wants to uh, give me a few ideas to try out here, uh, out of the box, it's not going to work. I tried several fixes on my Arch Labs computer. I was never able to get this game to run on Arch Linux. So if you can, let me know. All right. Uh, as far as graphics, we have Blender installed by default. We have GIMP, Inkscape, Krita. Uh, we do have two web browsers. We have Chromium and Firefox. We also have FileZilla. We have Telegram, Thunderbird. We have Audacity, we have Handbrake, Caden Live. Again, just a lot of applications that, hey, I have installed on most of my computers, but they're very special, the applications. Not everybody really needs those. Now, there was not, LibreOffice was not installed by default. In fact, I don't actually think anything was here. Maybe Document Viewer was installed. I added LibreOffice and Evolution were the two applications that I installed just to test out uh, if I could install applications which was a problem that I had the first time I ran this. So LibreOffice and Evolution, of all of the things that they give us, we don't have an Office Suite. I thought that was very interesting choices there. We do have uh, Pomac installed out of the box, so uh, hopefully it should be working, especially once I installed this and then I went ahead and ran the, uh, ran the updates. Let's just go ahead and uh, look for just something to install here. Uh, that's going to be pretty quick to do. Let's let's just go ahead and install Brasario. Why not? I just want to make sure that things can install here. Let's go. Let's just choose that and see if it works. Enter my super secret password. That's definitely not one, two, three. And let's see if we get an error or if we get some applications installing. Hopefully we should get applications installing. So everything looks like it's running right. Let's just go ahead and Give it a chance, let it finish. So out of the box, this case here, uh, I think that Salient has really come along since the first time I looked at it. Uh, again, I did have to do that fix, but we have to understand that that, that fix came in shortly after the, the release was was released. So uh, I'm not too bothered by that. I mean, it is Arch and I downloaded an Arch install that was over a month old. So we shouldn't be too surprised that there were a lot of updates and some things that we needed to do. 
I still can't get the, the Steam to work, at least on that particular game. I haven't tested other games since I'm not a gamer. You guys that know Steam all the time will probably be able to fix that right out of the box. Uh, very easy. But other than that, what we do have is if this is geared towards your individual setups, I think that this is a, a fine distro. If you're not big into the game or big into the media arts, you'll probably want to pass this one by and just use a different installer like Manjaro that doesn't give you a lot of stuff out of the box. Because there really is a lot of applications here that are very specialty. I mean, I use FileZilla. I'm a web developer, but who else uses FileZilla? I mean, really. Uh, Steam, Telegram Desktop, that's pretty specialty. So... Overall, not a bad system. Before we wrap this guy up, let's show the system information before I forget. So we're running KDE Plasma 517. We are running Linux kernel 5.4. That actually updated itself. Before I was able to run my updates, I was actually on 5.3. So we are on the latest Linux kernel over here. You can see all the other system specs that I have running on the system. So overall, it's very lightweight. The theming is good. It is consistent. Uh, I do love the options we have for, for the styling. Uh, theming's not as pretty as I liked the old XFCE theming a little bit better. I thought it was a lot cooler looking. Maybe I just really like that stag picture on the old uh, old salient. But overall, it is a good, strong distro. If you're into gaming, if you're into multimedia, you know, you got your Discord, you got your Telegram, a lot of those tools that you probably will use, especially if you're streaming video games, you do want OBS. But if that's not you, if you don't want to be streaming and doing all those things, it's there might be a little bit too bloated for you. That's kind of your own call to make, I think. Um, regardless, system settings, you know, nothing uh, too out of the ordinary here. Uh, we do have, I did notice in here, a uh, Grub repair tool. There's a Grub customizer. So we do have a few extra, more advanced tools built in here somewhere. But uh, with that, this is Salient OS. I definitely say it's worth giving a go. And uh, if, especially if you're in that, that arena where uh, uh, you're into the gaming and the multimedia. If you're not, you might want to give it a pass. There's a lot of software you're not going to need in here. So those are my final thoughts on Salient OS. Overall, great job putting it together. Uh, and if you don't remember the history of this distro, it was put together, like friends encouraged him to put it out um, based upon the customizations that he did to his personal system. So I don't have a problem with it being a bloated system. It's just, hey, welcome to the Linux world. Not every distro is for everybody. And uh, that's my take. It's really cool. It's really good distro. And uh, definitely check it out if, uh, uh, if it is for your particular demographic. If not, yeah, give it a pass. Check out another one that doesn't have quite as many applications pre-installed. So those are my thoughts on the new Salient OS based on Plasma. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.